I found a naughty video of my girlfriend, who I've been with for 8 years, cheating on me. Her family, our friends, and the cybercrime police are now involved. I feel numb. Almost 3 weeks ago a good friend of mine, Alex and an acquaintance, Mike, got a hold of a video of my girlfriend, Jamie, screwing another man. Mike found this browsing through adult sites with niche themes and by chance, recognized Jamie. I got into contact with Alex about it where both of them told me about the infidelity. When Alex and Mike told me of the infidelity, I was in shock and numb. I couldn't really say anything until I saw the video where I proceeded to puke my guts out. I couldn't even sit through a minute of it. The fact that it was edited to go straight into the action with Jamie's face clearly visible didn't help at all. We drove Mike home and Alex had a good sense to force me to spend the night at his place, rather than go home where I share an apartment with Jamie with no idea how that would end. We shared some beers mostly in silence. Alex tried to make me open up on how I felt about Jamie's infidelity, but I was just numb, I didn't know what I felt and told him so. I felt like wading through water with no thought in mind other than what was in front of me. Alex didn't push anymore and I passed out some time later. When I woke up, I recovered enough sense to realize that our relationship was most likely over. I go straight home by public transport, most likely brooding and looking pissed. I wonder what the other passengers thought when they saw me looking like shit while trying to emulate Batman. I get home and catch her getting ready to go out, ask me where I was and why I didn't contact her. I don't bother answering and just told her we needed to talk. We sit down facing each other on our kitchen table that we built from scratch in my grandfather's farm and that random thought pretty much broke the dam. A lot of stuff happened, a lot of harsh words were said, accusations, and blame. Too many details to describe but essentially, I immediately broke down in tears and asked her how the heck she could ruin this relationship we worked so hard on, she's confused and wanted an explanation, I dropped the bomb and showed her the video. She cries, begs for forgiveness, but I hear nothing. More crying and cursing until I tell her that we're over. That was it and she just. Shuts off? She slumped down and closed her eyes, still crying, but says nothing. This gets me out of anger and I try to figure out what she's doing. Talking to her, hard and gentle prodding, nothing. Absolutely unresponsive so I just drag her to our bed and lay her there. I go back to our kitchen and call her parents, Alice and Julio. I simply told them they needed to come and that their daughter is suffering a mental breakdown. I say nothing more than just telling them that they needed to see us and that what was happening needed to be face to face to explain. I shut my phone off, and went back to the kitchen to think about what the hell just happened. Her parents rushed to our apartment demanding what the hell happened. I don't tell them about Jamie's infidelity but just say she needed mental help, she's on the bed acting comatose but otherwise, okay. They couldn't bring her out of it and eventually I had to explain. I didn't want to do it without Jamie being able to explain herself. I showed them the video and they're heartbroken, told them we had an argument, I didn't hurt her, but she probably couldn't handle the stress and broke down. They decided to bring Jamie to her university's mental health clinic. I decided not to go with them. The next day, Jamie eventually wakes up. She's stable and responsive. There, she says that the video was not consented. Her family decided to report this to the cybercrime police. Jamie's family won't grill her with her mental state being the way it is, but her parents are obviously ashamed and aren't sure what to do other than what the psychologist recommends, which is to let Jamie rest for a while and support her until they're sure she doesn't implode, then was sent home to her parents. This was all relayed to me by her older sister, Jackie, who's trying to be the mediator. She asked me if I really was going to end the relationship. I responded saying that I'm not sure if we can even salvage it. Two days later, Jamie's parents asked me to visit them for a talk. I agree and go the next day. Jamie's parents, and her older sister are present. We go to their living room and sit down. They looked sad and tired and I felt the same. Jamie will be the last topic of our talk. First is me. They wanted my parents to be involved. I feel disrespected as we're already adults, plus my father and I are tense but I relent as I'm already tired and a bit out of my depth. Marriage was in discussion in the past after all. Finally, we talk about Jamie. She's stuck in her room, miserable and ashamed, otherwise, okay. She'll stay with her parents for now, when she's needed by the police she can stay with Jackie in a hotel. They understand that I needed space. They've submitted a report to our cities, they live about two hours away in the suburbs, cybercrime office. I'm needed for the investigation. I explained that I wasn't the one who found the video, but I'll try to get Mike involved. They apologize for Jamie, but I tell them she's the one who needed to apologize and that they shouldn't baby her. They agree but beg me not to argue right now since Jamie may relapse. They explain her psychologist's assessment. Spontaneous nervous breakdown, no history of mental illness, concluded to be caused by accumulated stress from her studies and acute stress reaction from our argument. She needs rest in a safe environment. Psych almost called the police on me but they convinced them not to and with no physical trauma observed, gave up. The discussion devolved to apologizing, tears from Alice especially, and other noise. But they did want to take charge of everything. The investigation, Jamie's well-being, her education and finances, etc. I was kinda washed off of everything. Eight days later, Alice calls me in the middle of the night begging me to see Jamie. She's having a depressive episode, with a kitchen knife, locked in the bathroom and yelling for me. Worst hour of my life. I'm pretty sure I almost died twice on the road and glad that my country isn't developed enough for highway cameras. I meet Alice and Jackie outside the house waiting for me. Jamie has mostly calmed and Julio's with her in her room. They beg me to go see her and with how bad the situation looked, I rush to Jamie. She's a wreck, looked like her blood's been drained and hasn't slept for a while. She starts crying the moment she sees me and reaches out her arms. Whatever anger, exhaustion, and anxiety melted away and I embrace her. She kept apologizing and begging for me to stay. I shush her and hold her tight. 
she eventually goes to sleep and I take a moment to think about what's happening. I genuinely felt heartbroken seeing her like this. This is not how I thought we'll be together in the future, much less this Christmas. I am losing my best friend and would have been partner for life. This was the person who helped me through my depression when even my own family dismissed it, she's even the one who made me make journals to help process what I go through. It's actually ironic how she's the reason how good I can write down details on her affair and how bad it affected me. She's not evil. She's a beautiful, patient, and overall wonderful human being. Thinking of all the stuff we've been through, what we've done for each other, if I were to list all of it, it would probably reach twice the word count for my post. I love her and was prepared to be with her for life and face everything that comes with it. And she destroyed that. I wake up before her and go to the kitchen for coffee. Jackie is there and explains that she's had episodes twice before and this was the worst yet. All of us except Jamie talk on what to do. Alice is in chemo for breast cancer, Julio runs a business 20 minutes away, Jackie's workplace is already hounding her, and Jamie needs help. The situation is screwed and everyone is exhausted. Jamie needs therapy, I implied mental institution and that almost got my head torn off, but no one can look after her 24-7. They ask me to reschedule the inevitable and try to help her. There was definitely some emotional manipulation but they are desperate. Due to my obvious lingering attachment and my own respect and love for these people, I agree. This is where I messed up. I go home, talk to Mike about the investigation, and he agrees to talk to the police. I call Alex and explain all the bull crap happening. He warns me that this didn't sound like the right call, a mental institution was probably the best, and I'm just gonna get hurt. Regardless, he'll still stand by my decision and to call when I need him. I love this guy. I've already scheduled a consultation for therapy and Jamie will have a different one scheduled three days from now in my city. I just want to take a really long nap and get away from all this.